Welcome to our talk on diff class, differentiable class simulation with refractional contact. I'm Yifei Li, and this is a joint work with Tao Du, Kui Wu, Jie Xu, and Wojciech Matusek. Class is everywhere in our daily life, and class simulation has wide applications in many areas. The film and game industry use class simulation to create beautiful animations and visual effects. Fashion designers use it to prototype garments. Roboticists use it to develop robots that assist people to dress. And with virtual try-on, we can now try on class virtually while staying comfortably at home. Many of these applications share in common that they need to repeatedly use simulation to achieve some desired goals. Consider the task of garment prototyping. A typical workflow involves the designer to make small changes to the design, then verify the design using simulation. This process is repeated many times until the design is finalized. There are two issues with this workflow. First of all, simulating cloth is challenging because it has large degrees of freedom and frequent contact and collision events. As a result, accurate simulation comes at the cost of long simulation time. Second, iterative manual editing is tedious. It would be great to have a computational workflow to assist the process. This is where differentiable simulation can come into play. Imagine you need to perform a task, say, tweaking the material settings of a dress so that the dress spins like a ballerina dress. With differentiable simulation, we can first simulate the cost through time with an initial parameter set, then measure how far we are from our goal using a loss function defined on the parameter. Because the computation process is differentiable, we can then reverse the computation order and derive the gradient of the loss with respect to the parameter. The gradient information allows us to then use gradient-based optimization methods to update the parameter. We can iterate this process until we find the parameters that minimize the loss and will achieve our design goal. The closest to our work is that of Leon and colleagues, which presents a differentiable class simulator. However, the proposed framework uses a non-physics-based contact model and uses Newton's method and directly performs backpropagation using adjoint method, making the whole framework very slow. The forward simulation model in our differentiable simulation framework uses the work proposed by Lee and colleagues, which presents a projective dynamics-based simulator to support dry frictional contact. Lastly, Du and colleagues presents a fast PD-based soft-body differentiable simulator, which directly inspired our work. However, comparing to our method, the framework is limited in that it doesn't model frictional contact. In this work, we present diff class, a differentiable class simulator that is very fast, models dry frictional contact, and has demonstrated effectiveness in various inverse tasks. Its performance comes from projective dynamic space forward simulation and a novel gradient computation trick to speed up backpropagation. We demonstrate the effectiveness of the simulator in tasks including system identification, inverse design, trajectory optimization, closed loop control, and real to sim tasks. To simulate class in time, the dynamics equation of the class is derived from Newton's second law of motion f equals ma. An implicit integration through time is preferred because robustness is essential for simulating class. After time discretization, simulating class involves solving a nonlinear equation over the next state of a class. Here, x and v denote the position and velocity of a class mesh at various time steps. h is the duration of the time step. m is the mass matrix and F includes the internal and external forces of the system. To solve this nonlinear equation, second-order Newton's method is used to linearize the equation. But this is rather expensive, because Newton's method requires computing a Hessian matrix for every time step, which is very slow to compute. And because the system matrix A is dependent on every time step, we also need to factorize a large matrix repeatedly throughout the simulation, making the simulation very slow. Lots of research effort went into speeding up forward simulation from the graphics community. In particular, in projective dynamics, by assuming the energies of the simulation take certain forms, 
PD solves the dynamics equation using an iterative scheme where the system matrix is the same across all time steps. This means throughout simulation, only one system matrix needs to be computed and factorized for solving all of the dynamics equations, significantly speeding up the forward simulation. Our simulation framework uses a prior work that extends projective dynamics to handle directional contact semi implicitly. It starts with a velocity based formulation of PD, where the right hand side of the equation denotes the impulse of the system. At each time step, during each iterative solve, the local projections P for the system energies are first computed. When collision events are detected for a node, the method looks at the impulse vector F to decide the type of the contact event, then adds a contact impulse vector to the right hand side to enforce signal Rini Coulomb loss, then proceed with the global solve. At convergence, the solution is guaranteed to satisfy the Coulomb loss. In differentiable simulation, we first simulate the clock through time, then compute the gradient in reverse time order. To backpropagate the gradient, we differentiate the governing equation of the forward path to derive the governing equation of backpropagation. To avoid directly performing matrix inverse, the adjoint method is used, where we transform the computation of matrix inverse into solving a linear system. The specific meaning of these matrices can be found in our paper, but what matters here is that the system matrix of the linear system is composed of three sub-matrices. The P matrix here is a constant matrix throughout simulation, and delta P and delta R is time-dependent. This means during backpropagation, we need to compute and factorize a large system matrix for each time step, which can be very slow. Naturally, we ask, is it possible to find some tricks to make the system matrices the same during backpropagation? It turns out that we can. If we take a closer look at the governing equation for backpropagation, we see that the system matrix can be broken down into a constant part and a time-dependent part. This gives us an idea to solve the system using an iterative scheme, where we iteratively update our guess set by computing the right-hand side of the equation which involves matrix multiplication with the time-dependent matrices, then solving a linear system that has a constant system matrix. Since this matrix is constant, we can prefactorize it, and solving the system itself will be fast. We repeat this process until the solution converges, and we observe good convergence rate in practice. To see how much benefit we can obtain from the iterative scheme, we designed these two benchmarking inverse tasks, wind and slope. In wind, we have a hanging square cloth blown by external wind force, and in slope, we have a square cloth sliding from a slope. The wind task is designed to have relatively small number of contact events, while slope has a relatively large number of contact events. Here's a table that shows the speed up we obtain from using an iterative solver. We repeat the task with different cloth mesh resolution, and overall, we can achieve a 3 to 12 time speed up. And the larger the resolution of the class, the more speed up we obtain from using an iterative solver. To see how diff class compare with gradient free methods in solving inverse tasks, we designed this benchmark inverse problem that aims to optimize the force field on the class to reach a ring at the end of the simulation. We solve the task with gradient based optimization using diff class and gradient free methods and see that our gradient-based method is hundredsfold more simply efficient than the gradient-free counterpart. We repeated the task with different numbers of design parameters and see that the advantage becomes more obvious as more optimization parameters are involved in the task. Many class-related applications can benefit from a differentiable simulator. In the system identification task, a target motion trajectory of a hanging t-shirt blown by the wind is given, and diff class is used to identify the system parameters to reconstruct the motion. Specifically, the design parameters are the class stretching stiffness and the parameters of the wind model, which we parameterize as a sinusoidal function. After a few iterations of optimization, the motion trajectory is successfully reconstructed. In this trajectory optimization task, we seek to optimize the motion trajectory of two end effectors hanging on a hat. 
The goal is to move the head onto the head model by optimizing the parameters of the splines controlling the trajectory of the end effectors. The trajectories of the two end effectors are modeled by Hermite splines, where each of them is parameterized by start and end positions and the tangent vectors. In our experiments, the task can be successfully completed with various initial trajectories. Here, we demonstrate a similar task where we seek to optimize the motion trajectory of four end effectors hanging on a sock. The goal is to put the sock onto a foot model. The design parameters are again the Hermite spline parameters of the end effector trajectories. This is a difficult task that shows frequent contact events between the foot and the sock model. And again, our gradient-based optimization can solve this task with very few optimization iterations. Inverse design of garments is another area that can benefit from differentiable simulation. In this task, we aim to optimize the dress material parameters so that after spinning, the bottom of the dress reaches certain heights. The design parameters are the density and the bending stiffness of the dress. This task involves a simulation with frequent self-collision events that creates the wrinkles and folds of the dress. Our experiments show that gradient information can still be very helpful under many collision events. Our differentiable simulator can naturally be integrated with machine learning frameworks. To highlight this ability, we demonstrate an advanced hat task that trains a closed-loop controller that embeds a neural network. The goal of this controller is to move the head onto the head from any starting positions around the upper hemisphere of the head. The trained controller takes as input the state of the current head mesh and end effector positions, and outputs an action vector that dictates how the end effectors should move in the next step. The design parameters are the network parameters of the two-layer MLP. Thanks to the gradient information provided by DiffClaws, we are able to train this controller in a very simple, efficient way. Compared to reinforcement learning, which is a gradient-free learning method, our gradient-based method uses 85 times less simulation iterations to finish the training while achieving similar final loss. To summarize, in this work, we present a differentiable class simulator that models dry frictional contact. Diff class is very fast because it uses projective dynamics for its forward simulation and exploits the efficiency in forward simulation to speed up backpropagation of the gradients. We observed significantly more simply efficiency to solve inverse tasks using our gradient-based method compared with gradient-free methods. The effectiveness of diff class is demonstrated in a wide range of inverse tasks. To learn more about our work, please check out our code base and project webpage and feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Thank you for listening.